everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. This one is from the Break the Blank page, What Comes Next series. I will put a link to where I broke the pages in the I card on the right hand side. So we are starting with the one actually on the left hand side where we've put gesso through a stencil, thick gesso through a stencil. Now you can't really see the texture here, but you can in that picture that I showed before. Now I knew I wanted to use kind of corally pinky colors and I knew I wanted to have a focal image that was going to be a flower. So what I wanted to do first was to add some pattern, some interest, some floral background design. And I grabbed a stencil and then I grabbed this stamp. This is from Stamping Up and I will put what kit it came from. I don't know if this is any longer available or anything, but you could use the stencil like I showed, something that's floral. So you go through what you have and use it. Now I'm stamping, I'm putting brown paint. I'm stamping into brown acrylic paint and then just stamping over this. My goal here is just to have kind of a floral backdrop to this. I don't want what you're seeing here to be forefront, which is why I'm doing it now before I put the color on. If I put the color first, it would be up front. This way the paint is going to be pushing this mark back and it's just going to add a really nice detail to the background. So I've decided to use alizarin crimson and Naples yellow. And this makes a lovely coral color. I'm mixing it, I'm dabbing into those colors and mixing it right on the page. And I'm getting this nice blend. Naples Yellow is my absolute favorite color. When you mix it with blues and Prussian, Prussian blues or greens, you get a lovely color. You get the lovely tone. When you mix it with the pinks, you get this. It's just a really basic color. And if you don't have it, I, I recommend that you get it. However, I like the Liquitex Basics version of it as opposed to Artist Loft. The Artist Loft one is lighter and doesn't quite give the same tone that I'm so in love with. So I'm just filling this in and you can see how the brown stamping that I did is peeking through. Some places more, some places less, but that's exactly what I wanted. It's kind of a floral backdrop. And I'm going to continue trying to build a background that is a that would look like you were up close in a garden. Now the texture from the gesso, thick gesso through the stencil is not as apparent as if you were using modeling paste. It's way more subtle and but it's definitely there. You can't see it but in the actual page it just it just adds so so much. I'm making sure that this is all dry before I move to the next step. So back with my idea of making a floral backdrop, I'm using this stencil, Plumeria, and I'm just using parts of it, the flower parts. Again, I want this is going to be in the background. This is not the focal image. And so I'm perfectly happy if some are more foggy and in the distance, some are more opaque. And I'm just, again, all over. I know I'm going to be putting more on top of this. So this is going to be pushed back. We're just making for some interesting layers. Now this is Onion Blossom, again from the Crafters Workshop, and I'll put a link to those in the description box below. And I'm using the Alizarin Crimson here. 
and I'm going over top of some of that white because remember the I don't want any of this to be focal image I just want this to if you look at it it would be like if you looked in your garden up close You can see how putting the alizarin crimson through the onion blossom one has pushed back the white. It's not as predominant. So continuing to add more, I'm spreading the alizarin crimson paint on my glass tabletop. And then I've got this larger, a bit larger scale script stamp from Darkroom Door, I believe. And I am stamping some script on there. It's very subtle but that's what I wanted. I could have, I was toying with the idea of doing brown, that might have worked as well. Black, I think would have been too stark. If you stamp into wet acrylic, make sure you clean your stamps. So making sure this is dry before I go to the next stage. Now I got to add some bling to this page. So this is gold paint that has been thinned and I'm using my fan brush to just splatter the gold on. This gold is a perfect match for the Naples yellow, but it has that shimmer. So it just adds that one more layer. Now this was, a, I believe, a free printable that I have, but you can use a daisy from a napkin. You can use it from um, a magazine. If you can't find a colored one, you can do a black and white one because we are going to paint over this. This is just giving me the base, the starting point. And I had cut them apart because I wasn't sure what the composition I was going to use. If I was going to go vertically like I ended up doing or if I was gonna go horizontally on the page. And I cut out a quote it says there are far better things ahead than any we leave behind from my soon to be released sentiment pack. It's about time. I absolutely love this page and how it came together. So now I am going to paint over the daisies and I'm going to add to the stems. So I'm mixing um, Hooker's Green with the Naples Yellow and a little bit of the brown to get the color. And I'm just extending the stems to where I want them to go because of course I don't want them just floating in midair. And I'll come back and shade these later when this is dry. So I grabbed a, I believe it's a filbert brush, but I ended up switching that out for a small angle brush to paint over the daisies. And I'm using white gesso, or you can use white acrylic paint and some of the Naples yellow. And I'm just going to be painting on top of the petals. If I go outside of the what's there, I'm okay with that. I can alter it. This is where I'm making it my own, but using it at using what's there as the base. I'm really globbing on the paint. I am adding texture. You'll see that in the close-ups at the end. But if you liked what it was, you don't have to do this step. This is just something I like to do. And I'll come back numerous times and add slightly different color combos in there. And here's where I switch to the angle brush. And I just 
dip my brush into the white paint, into the Naples yellow, and then paint it right on. And however it comes out is how it comes out. You could take these and paint them whatever color you want. I like this neutral tone. I'm just adding the centers and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a lot of shading and a lot of highlighting and adding more paint as I go till I like what it looks like. And that might be different than what you like. As I'm looking at this now, I'm thinking, oh, I wish I had stopped there. <laughs> but it's all a process. You're learning as you go. I really have to force myself to try not to be perfect, to be very loose when I do this. That is the secret. Be okay with it. This is an abstract. I'm not taking a photo of a daisy. I'm painting it. And it can be painterly and it can be semi-abstract. And if you look at the flowers in your garden, they're never exactly, all the petals aren't perfectly symmetrical. Everything isn't identical. I think when I, as I watch this and having thought about it, I'm not exactly happy with how the centers ended up. I think what I should have done is done the centers first and then done the petals. I think that would have given me the perspective that I think I lost with the centers would be looking further deep, deeper down. That makes sense. Here I'm using the floating acrylic technique with the brown paint and I'm shading around the sentiment and adding a little bit of shading uh, in the center of the flowers. And then I'm shading with the brown around the outside edge as well. My thought here was that black was going would be too stark. I do come back and I add the black. Most times I have one or I have two colors that I shade with. Quite often I do that and I like that look. But again, that's a personal choice. And you do a little bit and then you look at it and then you make your next decision. Every decision you make leads to the next decision. There is no right or wrong. It's just a matter of enjoying the process and having fun. Now I'm going to be shading around the daisy petals a little bit, adding some shadow. As well there's you know this background came together fairly quickly the, the the petals this finishing with the shading and highlighting actually takes up the majority of the time I always laugh because you're using the least amount of paint but it seems to take the longest amount of time here I added a little bit more brown I do come back in and I add more highlights. I 
thought it was a little too brown, so I did adjust it. Nothing you do can't be undone or altered. Here I'm adding more white because I just got too dark. But again, when you add that white on top, that dark is there. So that adds interest. That adds, you know, just another layer to it. Here I'm using my stylus and I'm just dotting on the Naples yellow, the brown for the center, just to give it some texture and a different look. So if you go back to the where we I just had glued down this printable, you can see that my daisies look very different now. And that was my goal in that. I guess the next step would be for me to have the printable, but to draw and paint it on my own instead of on top of. So maybe that'll be the 2021 challenge. Here I come back and I edge with black. I just needed, needed a little bit more. Maybe it was the black in the sentiment. But it just seemed to need a little bit darker edge to set this off, to frame it. I love how in the background, every layer shows. We have the texture from the putting gesso, thick gesso through the stencil, and then the stamping with the brown acrylic paint, the stenciling with the several stencils that we use, and then the stamping with the script. It all shows. There's just so much interest in this background. Now, this is a fairly small page, and so, and a lot of it is being covered up by the focal image. If I was doing this on canvas, I would have a bigger section where the background would show and I would bring out the textures. And so we, you would see all that detail a lot more than on an art journal page. I also would probably print the sentiment out onto tissue paper instead of having the white. But again, this is why I use my art journal. I try something out, and then if I'm taking it and putting it on a canvas, making it bigger, you can add more detail. When things are small, a smaller page, you need to edit yourself, because so much of it's not going to show. Here I'm shading with brown or black or a combination thereof. Just to make that daisy pop from the background. I'm just, I love how this came all together. So we started with stamping or stenciling with thick gesso. Then I did some stamping with acrylic paint. I applied my color. I did more stamping and stenciling. And then I put a vintage printable on top, which then I did the painterly effect over painting. 
Thanks so much for joining me. Close-ups are here of the original background and then some close-ups of the page. I hope you love this as much as I do. Give me a thumbs up. Share this with your creative friends. Now go get creative.